Welcome back everyone, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We are here live in Las Vegas for SaaS Innovate 2024, along with Dave Vellante, my co-host and co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media and theCUBE. And I'm pleased to have Jen Chase here, Chief Marketing Officer at SaaS. This is her show. She is the leader, award-winning CMO. Jen, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Oh, it's excellent to be here. And thank you for being here. We love it. Yeah. You guys have great guests. They're like great, we call them great talent because they're great on camera. They know their stuff. They bring a lot of uh, A game to theCUBE. We appreciate that. So, so, all good. Technology is infiltrating marketing. I want to get your thoughts on this because I know you think a lot about this. AI, you see all the use cases. Oh, I can write your literature for you. But there's a lot more going on. And what's your vision on how AI is, is helping you and, and other marketers? Because there's a lot of heavy lift that could be done, but you still need to have creativity, you got to have great messaging, you got to have great flair, all that's got to be there. Take us through your vision. Yeah, well, uh, you, know, you started off with, with talking about how technology has infiltrated marketing, and I think that's 100% uh, you know, true. I think gone are the days where marketing was, was creative only, so you have to be able to flex both your left and right side of your brain as, as a marketer. I think if they were to, uh, tape Mad Men now, it would be Mad Tech. Like it, it really, we have to be thinking about technology as an enabler for customer yeah. experience. And so that's really how we look at generative AI. Uh, I think it's imperative that CMOs now are setting the vision for yeah. how they want to apply generative AI, not only in their marketing department, but, but actually leading that conversation too yeah. across the company. Um, there's a yeah. lot of risks and a lot of rewards that will come from AI. And I think the more the yeah. CMO can be involved in those discussions with yeah. the customer experience at the heart of it, I think the better outcome you're going to get. Yeah, and you know it's great talking to some of your folks like Brian and your team, uh, the team here at SAS, they see this generative AI as a generational categorical net, net new category, yet you're leveraging all the SAS customer data and workflows, so there's a lot of, it's an acceleration of, of value. On the marketing side, it's every generation you have the next thing happen. So you had the MarTech stack. Yeah. Oh yeah, email marketing, inbound, you do all that optimizations, a lot of quant jocks out there going, okay, is the leads converting? What is a lead? So a lot of, a lot of stuff went on in marketing, the MarTech stack as it's been called. Yeah. What's the, because now we got another abstraction that's going to maybe simplify or abstract away the MarTech stack and create net new capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of those things that you're eyeing? Because that looks different, but it's, yeah. the game is still the same. You know, yeah. but it's different stuff going how on. How you do it. Is, how you is, do it. Is, what is, is what the really generative changed. version of absolutely, that? Absolutely, absolutely. So as we look at the use cases that we want to pursue with generative AI, we're, we're starting with what do we want to accomplish? What's the value we want to bring into the organization? So every new use case is, is being weighed against, is that going to make our marketers more productive? Are we improving mm -hmm. the marketer's experience yeah. um, in how they do their job? Is it going to improve our time to market? Is it going to make us faster, which we think will give us competitive advantage? Yeah. And then the third dimension is how is it going to improve customer experience? And yeah. I don't think we're having that conversation enough yeah. about generative AI. Everything yeah. is about how do, you, uh, how do you make content faster? How do you do things yeah. faster, but to what end? And, and so I, I, um, we're challenging ourselves to really look at those three dimensions. Um, one use case we've got in practice right now is how do we create promotional assets from an original piece of content? Whether that's a webinar or maybe it's a long form white paper. Mm -hmm. All of the derivative assets you want to create to promote that can we do that faster with yep. generative AI? And so we really, we think that's a, a real solid opportunity for so us. So reuse and repurposing. Exactly, exactly. And so to your point about marketing still going to require, you need to be creative, right? Yep. Um, that's where that comes in that original piece of content. And then it's the promotional assets, getting those done faster we think is, is, a, is a really effective use case. Um, so excited about that one. Do you do you think of it as uh, equally creative and quantitative? How are you thinking about that as a yeah, senior marketing I, I think it is, and I, one of the things that I want to guard against is if, we're, if everybody's using ChatGPT to, to write a promotional yeah. asset, every, every company is going to look the same, right? And so we really need to make sure we continue to differentiate ourselves in the market, yeah. and so you have to have that creativity, and I think there's actually going to be a higher value put towards yeah, yeah. creativity and marketing uh, as know, an outcome what, of this. What, so a lot of things that we see happening are like linear things are going away, like training content. Um, you have this kind of content, sales content, all this content out there, ways to measure insights. Is it working? So you have analytics. Yeah. Now you have things like knowledge graphs and neural networks. You mentioned original content and reuse. 
And then you complicate that with how do you get your message out? There's so many channels. Yeah. So we're, we might live in a world where there's some autonomous automation around identifying organic channels of distribution, paid channels of distribution. I don't yet see that fully developed yet. What's your vision on how yeah. that evolves? Because what you're getting at here is if you shoot original content, you have all this data, you got to make sure they're in the right places and is it the right data? Yeah. Or is it hallucinating? So yeah. what is your vision on this? This is an important, like cutting edge topic. Yeah, People are really yeah. trying to figure this out. Yeah, you know, a, a couple of thoughts. When I think as marketers start to apply generative AI in, in kind of market mix modeling, which is almost what you're talking yeah. about uh, earlier on, um, I think it's, it's going to be just, uh, one of the enduring qualities yeah. of, of generative AI is going to be how we engage with software yeah. and, and that it's, it's done more in a, in a prompt-based yeah. way. And so another use case that yeah. we're um, actively pursuing is how do you, um, in, in uh, Customer Intelligence 360, look at your audiences, understand your customers better, and you don't have to be a data scientist to do that if you have the ability to, to yeah. interact with the software through a, a prompt-based way. And so I think that's a, yeah. a really exciting opportunity moving forward that you're going to empower even yeah. more people in the marketing organization to, to be a champion of the customer. Um, so that to yeah. me is a... a, a you know, I was talking with Pamela on your team, I think she runs comms and all the AR and PR yeah. stuff, and we were talking about the power of organic interaction and how people are sourcing information from their peers, or they, they see the marketing messages out yeah. there, and sometimes if they want messages, delivered to them, they might opt in for that. So there's kind of this progression of non-linear progression on the organic side that was traditionally earned media. Mm -hmm. Paid media, banner ads and whatnot is changing. Yeah. So the role of paid, earned and owned media is evolving and changing. It what is. is your vision on that? Because I think this is, I see a lot of marketers leaning on old playbooks yeah. like, oh, we're going to pay someone to, you know, mm -hmm. amplify our message or, you know, be a mouthpiece for us yeah. or I'm going to put, this is our media, our brand, and then earned, yeah. we just have people pitch journalists that no longer exist, or, yeah. or those kinds of things. How do you see the, the new earned, owned, and paid? Yeah, in fact, I would, I would say, we, we think about it as PESO, paid, earned, shared, and owned. So shared is how do we activate our employee base to be sharing more content on SaaS's behalf? They're, they're, uh, you said they were their they're talent, right? Yeah. They're, they're subject matter experts. They have incredible yeah. credibility in, yeah. in the marketplace. We want to make sure that we're really in, empowering our, our employee base to, to, to be um, ambassadors of, of the brand and the technology throughout. So I think about it from a Peso perspective. So, you, so you're for way. your employees becoming active socially and absolutely. tweeting and retweeting, LinkedIn reposting, absolutely. Reddit posts. Oh, great. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We have training programs in place. We have a tool that we use internally in order to help some enable say, and empower Some markets lock that down, say mm -mm. you can't speak, you're not PR trained, only spokespeople. Yeah. So you're like, go be good judgment and... Absolutely, yes. We have a tremendous amount of trust in our employees. We provide them with the tools that we want to make sure they're empowered and enabled in order to, to have effective um, conversations. But each employee is a, is, a, is a brand supporter for SaaS. Well, send that we talent to the queue. We'd love more talent to come on the queue. We'd love yeah. experts, so... so yeah, I've, I've got about 12,000 people ready, ready and waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Chad's going to love that job. <laughs> so notwithstanding this yeah. notion of uh, reverting to the mean, you know, maximum vanilla marketing, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. that, I get that... that that's a risk. But there's stats out there that like a lot of people are afraid that, that AI is going to take their job, especially yeah. in marketing. I'm curious as to how you think about it. Yeah. I mean, to me, AI makes me smarter. So, and I don't want to be dumber. So I, I don't want to go backwards. <laughs> so that's, a, that's cool. Yeah. But how do you think about that as a marketer? How, how do you prepare your people yeah. for that sort of optimism versus pessimism? Sure, equation? it's such a great, such a great question. Uh, you know, IDC published a report that said in the next two years they expect 30% of mundane marketing tasks to be automated through generative AI. And I am here for that. I, I, You're I here, think that, yeah. that is going <laughs> to uh, allow us to elevate and, and provide yeah. even more higher value back into the organization yeah. because we're not doing mundane yeah. tasks. Um, at the same time, you know, two out of three marketers are concerned about their jobs and whether or not AI will take their jobs. And what I am saying very clearly to my organization is, it is not AI that's going to take a marketer's job. It's going to be a marketer who understands how to apply AI that mm -hmm. will. So, 
my job is to enable and empower my organization to use generative AI effectively. Yeah. Uh, we've invested a lot in what we call lifelong learning for yeah. marketers. Yeah. I mean, marketing's changed more, I think, in the past two years than it has yeah. in the past 10. And so we need to make sure we're keeping our marketers really um, just very current on technologies and setting a standard of this is what it looks like to be a modern marketer and how we expect you to get there. You know, I love about the cube is you can riff on topics of, with subject yeah. matter like yourself and marketing. Last year, Brian Harris gave me a demo of a digital twin factory tour. He's like, look how cool this is. This is an actual digital twin. So I have to ask you, do you see a day where there's going to be a digital twin for this event or your customer yeah. experience? Because, you know, you got Apple Vision Pro, you got the metaverse evolving. So I could imagine in a world where you replicate all the work and investments in this and have a digital version. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see that day coming soon? Yeah, I mean, as we went through the pandemic, we certainly created um, many more effective yeah. virtual experiences. Yeah. So uh, we, we got pretty good at that, I think, as a, <laughs> as a marketing profession. Yeah. Um, what we do love about this event, though, <laughs> is the conversations and the uh, that you can have and the people. Yeah. And it, I mean, events are really about those connections you make because you can stream this yeah. content back in your office, but to have the dialogue right yeah. after a, a, a presentation or to make a connection with a peer. Yeah, the virtual, really the virtual, the virtual events are kind of like individuals, more like a passive consumption. But the yeah. people component yeah. is huge here. It like, is. if we can replicate that, that, that would be like the key thing. I mean, that's, to me, that's, digital twins are possible, I and mean, you could just say, you know, do something, but if yeah. no one shows up. Yeah, I mean, I, What's your biggest excitement and fear of the AI? There's a lot of unknowns, so you have to take some chances, yeah. which means you got to be prepared to innovate and, and be situational yeah. aware of what comes at you. What's your biggest excitement level? Uh, which, what's you're excited about, and then what are you might, you're watching yeah. closely? Yeah. You know, what I'm excited about is I, I do think we're going to make, as a society, tremendous gains applying generative AI and AI technologies, whether it's improved healthcare, um, it, 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 to just better, a, a better quality of life for everyone. Yeah. My biggest fear is that we do we need to do this responsibly uh, yeah. it, and make sure that we're 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 being fair, we're being uh, yeah. removing bias, and, and being extremely yeah. transparent yeah. with everything we do with AI. And personal information, security, those Absol kinds of things are responsible. That's the that's the responsibility part and trust. Yeah. Do, do you worry about our capacity to to govern AI at some point? Maybe not this year, or next year, but may, maybe 10 or 20 years from now, if if AI is smarter than all humans collectively and we're growing computational power <laughs> exponentially. Yeah. Uh, that's what I worry about is like, okay, uh, that's so unpredictable. Yeah. You know, maybe you don't have to worry about that for a couple years, but I think it's coming, actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to your point about healthcare, I, I mean, you know, it's said that we, you know, if you, if you go from, you know, you're, you're what, 50 years old and you turn 51, you're a year older. Well, actually, with healthcare these days and technology, you're actually only eight months older. So yeah. Yeah. we're compressing that, yeah. who knows? Maybe we'll go backwards. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I think the integration of AI is going to be a top priority and you get a good handle on it. What's your, what's your plan for the next year? You guys run a lot of events, you get a lot of customer events. Um, what's your vision for the next, what do you, what do you have on your to-do list this year and then next year? And how, is, how do you see AI maybe putting the toe in the water, maybe integrating in. What's, yeah. your, what's your plan? Well, um, immediately after this event, we take it on the road. So we are going on tours called SAS Innovate on Tour. So we take a version of this to 14 different cities across the globe. And, and it's, a, it's a great way for us to meet our customers in their backyards. Mm, and, and so we're really excited about that. Um, and then we will do this again next year in May in Orlando. Yeah. So uh, we're already making plans for 25 and 26 actually. Uh, when I think about uh, some big initiatives that we're, we're putting into place, um, certainly want to do more to raise brand awareness for SaaS. Uh, I think mm -hmm. we, for 47 years, have been quite humble. Um, yeah. And we've got a lot to, to boast about. Yeah, we've yeah. got some great technology, and so yeah. I'll be doing a lot of work around improving our brand awareness. Um, one area that I'm excited to explore more generative AI is our website experience. I think that a web experience can be com completely just reimagined yeah. um, with generative AI. So we're going to be rolling our sleeves up and thinking about that very differently. And, and those innovate around the world, those are what, one day um, those events? Those are two day events. Two day events. Two day events. Really? Yes. Yep, wow. two day events. Okay, great. Going for it. That's and for those 28 days 
of this uh, after this? 28 days of goodness coming oh, around Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you, guys, you have all your studies picked and dates are all locked we and loaded? We were locked and loaded as of January 1 because we wanted to make sure our sales teams, when we had our, our company kickoff, Got it. knew exactly they could go back to their, to their offices and invite their customers immediately. So we that's are locked awesome. and loaded. Well, congratulations on the great event. Great to see you. And of course, you guys do that great pro-am. I, I was lucky Sass enough to be invited. Yes. Thank you for yes. having Love me. Love to have you come back. Um, yeah, I hope to have a good performance like I did last time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, had, very I, got a, I got a hole in one. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. No, I, no, no, you got a, a no, net hole in one. I got a net hole in one. Excellent. Yeah, that's because so, you're handicapped. You got I've never had that before. That's pretty anyway, cool. No, well, you were lying shot. zero on that shot, <laughs> first shot. <laughs> yeah, but I blew the rest of the round. Brian carried everybody. You guys have a great company. And again, I think what's impressive is you guys are announcing firsts. Subscribe to models, that's mm -hmm. a first. Okay, production workloads with customers, but those are first. So you have a lot of firsts going on with we the do. team right now. So that's going to be a big part it of is, what it you're is. doing. And we're using this event as our opportunity to, to launch our new product. So you can expect that in 25, you can expect that in 26. That's our plan. All right, so next year we'll be sitting here. What are we going to be talking about? Ooh, I think we're going to be talking more and more about quantum computing. You heard a little about, yep. about that this yeah. morning. Um, I think there's more, legs to generative AI that we'll explore. I mean, we announced this morning yeah. DataMaker um, in, in synthetic data, and I think that's going to be something that, that we'll continue to, to have a richer conversation about next year. Great. Jen, thanks so much for coming on the really appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be back with more coverage of SAS Innovate 24 after the short break. We'll be right back. <laughs>